Welcome back everyone to another Falcon and the Winter Soldier Breakdown. So, I'm going to upload this as fast as I can because I haven't really gotten the time to record this video. So anyway, spoilers up ahead before I get started, but that should be obvious though. But the first detail is not really spoilers, so yeah, unless you want to like read the description. Anyway, you'll know what I mean. So, this episode is called Truth, and uh, this is a reference to the Isaiah Bradley story, which is funny because we end up seeing Isaiah in this episode. And we get more of the truth of his backstory. Huh? Yeah, you see what I did there? <laughs> okay, okay, I'm done now. So it's called Red, White, and Black instead of Red, White, and Blue. Anyway, so yeah. And uh, so the episode opens with Walker running into a warehouse and he ends up getting, in, uh, he is so, he feels horrible about what he did to Nico and he's in complete regret and he's getting all these flashbacks of him and, and Lamar throughout the episodes and then uh he is really in regret right here and he's just like sitting there until sam and bucky show up and then once they do what ends up happening then is he ends up doesn't, he doesn't really care he just gets back into like cat mode apparently and then he ends up um and then falcon try tells him And then after that, it escalates into a fight. But yeah, anyway, so yeah, uh, Walker is easily able to be Bucky and Sam because you need to understand this. If you remember from episode two, Carly was, and all the other Flag Smashers were able to beat up Bucky pretty badly. And um, yeah, even though he was outnumbered, Carly was still able to beat him up even one on one. So obviously, it's that Walker has the exact same serum as them, which from my last Falcon and Winter Soldier video, I said how it all came from Isaiah's blood, then logically, they're really strong. And if you remember, Isaiah was able to beat the crap out of Bucky, and he ripped off his metal arm. So it's all connected, and it all makes sense. And of course, since Sam, uh, of course, Sam doesn't have any serum, so unfortunately, he's not gonna win that battle <laughs> anyway so bucky gets knocked out really easily and then sam is getting beaten up too but he does use his wings really good in this fight and then eventually walker's able to pin him down and he really claims that i am captain america and then he rips off sam's wings brutal and then what ends up happening then is he tries to kill him the same way he killed nico but then after that bucky saves him returning the favor. Anyway, but they are able to get the shield out of Walker's arm, but they have to break it, unfortunately. Anyway, they bring the shield back, and Torres and Sam, they have a conversation. And when Torres looks at the wings, there is this one little line that I want to talk about really quickly. There is this one line that Torres says to Falcon. But I'll just play the whole conversation. I'm pretty sure that by platforms, I'll be quick with this. When he says platforms, I think he means stuff like Instagram and social media. Why is because, um, because after what Walker did, everything was recorded. So obviously he's going to have a lot of issues.
So that line where he says to keep you, or Sam says to keep the wings, is obviously foreshadowing Torres as his next line is Falcon. Because from the moment that we that we were introduced to Torres, obviously something's gonna happen where he's gonna have to take up the mantle of Falcon. Obviously, this episode shows Sam coming into his form as Captain America. So obviously, it makes sense for Torres to come. But I can imagine though, maybe in like season two or something, they might have Torres as Falcon, or whatever wherever Torres shows up as. Anyway, Walker has his trial, and uh, these same government officials are back again from episode 1 and 2. So I'm just going to play the whole conversation like I did last time. So obviously from that whole scene that we got, it's pretty clear that Walker is right on some level. They, he did dedicate his life to their mandates. And he only did what they asked of him. I feel like if uh, Walker didn't do this in, in like in broad daylight in public, they would have been like, "Thank you very much," and they probably would have promoted him or something. Anyway, so uh, and see, this is the problem. You see, the government tried to do this with Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson and some of the other Avengers, but they didn't agree with it, and this is what happened. Uh, if the Avengers had actually signed, if all of them actually did sign the Sokovia Accords with like no conflict at all, what would have ended up happening? would have been the fact that um everybody would have everything would have been horrible because the because uh because the government would have basically tried to like um or the UN would have tried to have people like just have them stay calm when the Avengers do save them even if they cause lots of collateral damage. But anyway, yeah. So the cameo that was here is actually uh Contessa Von Valentine. I don't know her name is Valentina. Anyway, so she says, Walker, you did the right thing by taking that serum, which means that she knows that she knows that she took the serum. And then she also knows So she tells him that it makes it very, very valuable to certain people. And by certain people, I for some reason, my mind just keeps going back to the power broker. Honestly, I think that she is more closer to being the power broker on my in my mind than Sharon Carter. And that's that. Anyway, Sharon Carter is very sketchy in this episode, too. So we'll get to that later, though. So in Sokovia, Bucky goes to uh, arrest or kill Zemo, actually. And he pulls a gun on his head, but he tricks him and he drops the bullets. And then the Wakandans, they arrest him. And then Io tells him that they're actually taking him to the raft, which is the same uh, place from uh, Civil War. In fact, Sam and Wanda, uh, Sam was in prison there. Wanda was in prison there. Ant-Man went there at one point. Hawkeye went there, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, I think that's all. But there might be someone else. I don't know. Because Bucky and Steve were the only ones to escape. So it was like, I think just them four. But yeah. Anyway. And then, um, yeah. So... We're going to uh, definitely get some Thunderbolts because uh, if you remember, Thunderbolt Ross runs the raft. So obviously he has like direct interaction with these people in there. And also most of the MCU villains who are still alive 
are have been sent there, like Abomination from the Incredible Hulk, and Walker might eventually go there himself if he another if he does a, another like catastrophe like he did last episode. And we also have a uh, Ghost from Ant Man and the Wasp. She's probably not in the raft, but she's probably like off doing her own thing. And then you have Agatha Harkness, who even though she is in Westview, she is a witch, so obviously she could like. She could just, like, if she does escape, which I speculate she will in Multiverse of Madness, because the madness will probably be able to escape common sense people. Anyway, so if she's able to escape, then she might end up teaming up with him. Now, if you don't know who Valentina is, just wondering, if you do not know who Valentina is, she's actually Madame Hydra. And, um, and Madame Hydra was a lover of Nick Fury, so... Uh, she was a lover of Nick Fury, and she was also like a triple. She used to like she used to like triple cross people because she pretended to work for Shield when she was really an agent of Hydra, and then she also faked out Hydra. While she was working for a bigger organization than that, so she basically triple crossed people. I don't even know what is the term for that at this point. Anyway, so uh, and since Zemo will be going to the raft, we might see him interact with some of the other characters. Also, Zemo might be able to to be able to just like manipulate some of the other characters in this uh in the raft to be able to do his like bidding or whatever but yeah anyway so uh sam goes to visit isaiah and we end up hearing eli bradley for a more and he plays basketball for a little bit so that's just a little bit of description anyway so sam goes to visit isaiah and isaiah tells him how uh during the korean war uh his uh his uh his men they got captured in this one mission and what ended up happening was uh, before that, the serum was recreated, but they were basically they were they were basically just going crazy on the experiment with the black super soldiers. And for some reason, it worked with Isaiah, but but like for but it had like major side effects for some of the other for the other men in his group. Like for example, some of them went crazy, some of them died off, some of them would like get handicapped or something. You know that you know the thing. So obviously, what would end up happening then is uh, what would end up happening is. Uh, they would all start to die off. So what ended up happening was Isaiah went on a mission uh, in the Korean War. Someone they captured the, his group, and they and he heard them talking about blowing them all up. So one night he broke out and he freed him. And then as soon as he came back home, he was in prison. What what is really sad and dark about this is that this exact same thing happened with Steve Rogers. When Bucky was captured once, he was experimented on by Hydra for a brief minute of time. And what ended up happening then was Rogers uh, did not fulfill his duty and he went and he went rogue. And then he basically saved all of his men. But when he came back, he was celebrated. But in the Korean War, the, Isaiah Bradley got in prison for 30 years. But while he was imprisoned, there was a nurse who took pity on him. There was a nurse who uh, took pity on him. And what ended up happening then was she had helped him get his uh, wife's letters because his wife was trying to like mail him letters and stuff while he was in jail. But the government would not allow him to get any to it, which is just honestly really brutal. Very, very brutal. Anyway, so Sam hears all about this and he wants to tell... And he wants to like announce Isaiah Bradley's story to the world, which I, which Isaiah says no because if you did, then uh, everybody would kill me as soon as they see. Anyway, but then what ends up happening is, um, uh, I think what will happen is once Falcon or Sam he takes up the mantle of Captain America, he's going to he's going to do justice by Isaiah, and eventually Isaiah will be given a part of the Smithsonian in that same exhibit with Captain America. He will be right next to that. Anyway, so Sam calls his sister and he comes home. Now, this is just a minor detail. A lot of people pointed this out, too. This is a picture of a small boy with the father. So this might be one of Sam's nephews and him, or it could be Sam and his father, who I think his name is Paul, as his name and his and his wife's name are both on the family boat that um, that Sam is trying to fix up in this episode. So I think their name is Paul and Darlene, as you can see. So yeah. So I think that it's possible that uh, this is obviously Sam and Paul. But anyway, so Sam's plan was to get the community to help them fix the family boat. That way they don't need to sell it. And Sarah agrees and they don't want to sell it. And um, and um, uh, Bucky comes in to help them. And he basically gets that. He, get, he has it in this suitcase. There's a uh, material that there's a uh, Wakandan. The Wakandans, they basically made this new suit for Falcon that he can use, which is going to be amazing, but we never see what's inside. Well, there's a shot of him opening it in next uh, in next episode. So, yeah. Anyway, so then what happened is uh, Walker meets up with... Uh, uh, Walker meets with... Um, 
Oh god. Walker meets with Lamar Hoskins' parents and they and uh he ends up telling him what he ends up telling him what uh Nico did, even though Nico didn't even kill him. So I think either two options. Either Walker's lying and then this is all just a bunch of crap, or uh or Walker really does believe that Nico killed him. Even though Carly did punch him into the column, uh he believes in his mind because Nico grabbed him and held him, he couldn't save him. Because if you remember from episode two, uh Carly punched uh punch uh Hoskins. And he flew off the thing in episode two during that truck scene. But then Walker was able to save him. So I think Walker, now that he was held, he wasn't able to save him. So I think in that mind, he he just blames Nico, which is not Nico's fault. It's just it's just in Walker's mind, like that's like like that's what he thinks. But yeah. Anyway, so he sees this poster of Cap is back, and he really does believe he is Captain America as that one senator as that as that um during the court trial. That's what ends up happening. Anyway, so Sharon Carter calls Batroc the Leaper from episode one. And basically, I'll just replay their whole conversation like I did earlier. So uh, obviously that whole conversation was really crazy. So Sam, uh, so I think it was also revealed in this episode that Sharon was the one who hired him to capture Captain Vassant from uh, episode one. And then because a lot of people were wondering about that. And also she also says, and she also, and she basically hires him to help the Flag Smashers. And what's really weird with this one is that she asks them to help find uh, the help the flag smashers, and I think that she's out to get the GRC because they end up trying. They attack one of the GRCs, the Patch Act. I think that's what it's called. Now over with Sam and Bucky. Uh, Sam uh, sleeps in their house for some reason on the couch. At least that's some improvement, you know, with the furniture from episode one. And he sees the kids playing with the shield, which is just cute moment. But then later on, Sam and Bucky they actually do train with the shield, and Bucky explains that the reason why. He was so annoying, and he and he basically kept bugging Sam about the shield throughout episode two. Is because that he is because he thinks of the shield as his last line of family, and they keep mentioning how Steve is just gone, not dead, but gone. But I feel like if they actually did want to apply that that Steve was really dead, they would not have used the word gone. They would have used the word dead, and they probably would have had some sort of funeral for him. But of course, they didn't. So I think he might be still alive. Anyway, so uh, Sam trains with the shield more. And it's amazing. And Sam talks about how there is someone in that book, I bet, who probably still needs closure. And you're that only person who can give it to them, which is an obvious reference to Yori from episode one. So obviously, I think next episode, maybe at like one of the fun final scenes, Bucky is going to go to Yori and he's going to apologize for what he did. And he's going to actually like he's going to actually give him closure because Yori has been messed up after his son died. And what actually really screwed him up was not figuring out how he died. So, yeah. But anyway, so back in New York City, there there's the patch act that is going on. And the same senator from the court trial shows up again. And he seems like he just wants to get it over with. Like, he really doesn't care about the refugees that, like, he's literally about to dis, uh, dispatch. But some of the other senators are trying to, like, be more sympathetic and stuff like that. And then, obviously, the guards in the background, they're, like, um... They're ready to uh, start the attack because they're actually part of the Flag Smashers and they're infiltrating this. Anyway, and then obviously a smoke bomb goes and then the alarm goes off. And then all while that's happening, Sam opens up his suitcase ready to fight for his country. Anyway, so this is going to be an amazing finale, I can tell. And there's lots of footage from it. So we have a lot to get down next week. And next week I will try to get this video out earlier than last time so yeah i will try but i'm uh not sure but i don't know i might be able to get the video out pretty quickly so yeah anyway 
Um, this is the video I made on Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings trailer. And then here is my last episode video, so please just watch that video. 